Hi everyone, in today's video, we will see how to use Airtable REST API into you know, your Python. So if you are looking for an you know, easy to use database solutions and you also want the power and flexibility of the traditional database, then you should definitely you know, check the Airtable. So what exactly the Airtable if you are not familiar? So Airtable is like your spreadsheet database, you know, like you have let's say tables and the columns and all these things, right? But we, you know, very much better you can think of a user interface. So if you look at the spreadsheet, what you have here, the same structure, you know, rows and the columns, and then you have a air table, right? So air table has a lot more to offer compared to let's say spreadsheet. And one of the primary use case that I use, you know, air table is actually to integrate with our machine learning application to store the, let's say the model prediction and also the user interaction. So I already had, a, you know, have a two videos on the Airtable here. I have shown, you know, how to use Airtable to store the model predictions. And I also have one more video that how can we integrate, let's say, a model like GPT-3 into the Airtable and bring some intelligence to it, right? So having uh, access to Airtable using Python is very much important to create the custom Python solutions or the automate thing, you know, or the streamline your workflow. So today, that's what we're going to show you. So we will see how to use Python API or the Python REST API to interact with the uh, Airtable, right? So I already have one basic table that I want to use. So in the Airtable, you have a concept of, let's say, you can call it as a base or a table. So if you're not familiar, let me take one minute and show you, right? So when you come to Airtable, you can log in with your, you know, Google or Gmail account and uh, you can use Airtable freely. If you want the other feature, you can, you know, start a free trial and use it, right? So the first thing is the base. You can think of it's like in a database. So you can create the base here and you can, you know, give some name to base. Maybe I would call it as a sample base, right? So you can call it as a sample base and then you can have a couple of tables here. So if you double click, you can rename the table here, right? So maybe I call it as a sample table, something like this, right? And you can save. So now I have a database, something like you can call it as a base, then I have a table and then you have a rows and the column that you can use, right? So if you click on any row and if you took right click, then you can edit the field actually, right? So if you look at let's this particular field, right? So you can uh, right click and edit the field. You can change the name. Let's say I want to make it as age and then even I can change the data type. So instead of this long text, single line text, let me search for anything related to the number. And I see there is a number data type and then maybe the format I would prefer the integer and then I save it. So now it become now number column. Similarly, uh, you know, you can play around it. You can create those columns, put some values, right? The interesting thing is how do we going to, you know, communicate or the connect with this particular spreadsheet kind of interface we call it Airtable using the Python and that's what we're going to uh, see today. So you you search or, uh, you know, you can search, you know, uh, the Airtable API and you should land here. So let's say if I search the Airtable API, and then you should get this, you know, interface, uh, which I had just opened here. This is what we get. That is an Airtable API uh, reference, right? So if you want to, so there are, you know, uh, you know, let's say the libraries for each of these uh, languages. So Python, we have this thing, but I see the Airtable keep changing their, you know, uh, ways of to interact with the Airtable. And so I thought it's better actually to get familiar with their REST API, which is pretty easy and intuitive kind of thing. And that's what we're going to, you know, uh, see here. So let's uh, do one thing, right? So how do we authenticate first of all with the Airtable? Because you're going to need some key or API, right? So it uses the you know uh, the access token kind of thing. So we can create the personal access token. If we don't have, the, you know, uh, we can always uh, click on let's say create access token. So that will ask you to create some token that you can send during the let's say request. So let's create some token. Maybe I can give it to let's say YouTube demo or something. YT demo and then what this token can do so you can decide the scope that it can do so the first scope is see the data in record so okay we are okay we want to you know see or list the records the other scope we can add even let's say create edit and delete those records so now we can also list the records and we can also modify them kind of a thing and then this token do you want to be applicable to all these things or maybe let's select particular base that we want to apply so what is our base name? I think our base name is this YT tutorial. I might have a duplicate basis here. Let me, you know, go and, you know, let's delete this one. Uh, we are not using that one. Let's go again here and search the base that we just created. 
maybe this one i guess yt tutorial is what uh, we just created uh, so let's select this particular base and we want to create now token for this particular you know base so that let's copy it and done and let's take that you know token to our maybe let's say here and let me paste here so that we can use that token so we got the token using which we can programmatically connect to the air table right so again we will start with the first thing how do we list records from the um, air tables so if you go back to air table api you know developer uh, interface or the api right uh, maybe let's better i search air table api and you know go to that interface take it here at the read of this one and let's see how do we authenticate right so we can pass uh, so there is a call request you can see and we can pass as a authorization beer token your bearer token i guess you know the whatever the token we just created but i'm going to show you how to do this thing in a python so let's focus on the first example like how do we list the records so let's say to listing the record we have to pass the base id right and the table from which we want to you know list the record and definitely the authorization token that we need to send so let's look at our first request right so the first request you know we require a base id and the table name so let's grab the base id we require the base id okay so let's look at the list record thing and then you know uh, we can go through because we want actually the base id here so how are we going to get the base id here so let me see whether is there any i think we should have some link here to you know to get the base id here or something if not let me see whether we have anything here so this is the scope this is the introduction yeah here we have all our workspaces right so maybe uh, the one we created i think it must be in this particular workspace so let me go back and you know let's go back to the interface and see where it is okay the bay workspace itself is called yt tutorial this is our workspace if you go inside this workspace then we give our name to our let's say that is also similar yt tutorial so let's go back to the interface where we can select so this is the workspace we care about right so we are in the introduction tab only uh, right and then we should see all our base somewhere here so now in this particular we have we got the id of our base so this is our base id called yt tutorial so those and you can also see the what kind of table we have so we have a customer table we have name so all this information is here that we can you know use so let's use the base id first again i'm not sure whether you remember so let me go back and show you where did we click so we click simply on introduction here that is the home page of this api reference there we can select the workspace this one is the workspace and simply we you know uh, we saw this is our uh, uh, what is this base and we have this id so let me copy this id and put it here so we got the base id now and uh, where is the table name i think we got yeah this is the table let me copy it properly customers that's what we want to access so yeah we got everything now and we have already our token right so this is how we use the request library right so we imported the request library right we have let's these two variables which is url and our token and then in the headers we just want to post our authorization token so we are passing this bearer token and this is where i'm uh, you know putting this value and eventually request.get because it's a get request the url and the headers that we want to pass so let's see what we get let's run this particular thing and i think we got something so let's look at so i know that if you if you print this data thing right what we have if you look the data thing is like a python dictionary and we can see you can see what keys does this uh, you know data has so if you look at and you see it has only one key record so let's see what's inside this records and the record seems to be a list because we have a list of records right so let's look at what is how does one record look like so one record you can see it has some id when it got created and the fields associated with it right and uh, that seems to be an empty record why we got one empty record maybe yeah this one this could be because you know uh, is it because this let's let's delete this thing and we'll see okay and what if we again uh, run that same request and, and do we get that empty record let's run the request data records and look at the yeah now we get only those two records what we have data because that empty records was there right so anyway so let's look at our first uh, record we saw and this is related to the let's say raj that record we have 
and you see each record is again a dictionary. It has its ID when it got created and the list of fields it has, right? So if you uh, want to access the fields, you can access it. So this is how you can get, you know, let's say all the records what we have, right? Now then how do we get a particular record that we are interested? Let's say to get the particular record, again, the same URL that what we use for getting all the records, but now we can pass the specific, let's say ID of the record that we are interested. So let's take this ID, which is related to I think Raj. Let's copy paste this ID here and again, we're going to make a request again get request with some modified url right so let's see what we get once we're going to get this particular thing we got some error invalid permissions to the model yes because we didn't change the base id our base is different right our base is different so i should have make it variable okay so when you guys work make sure it is variable the base id maybe i have to change it all the bases now because uh, you know i have tried this thing right so let me quickly you know paste it everywhere but in your case make sure you make it as variable okay so i pasted this particular thing now let's see yes we got that record right so this is way you can even access the single record so what takes next we can try you know how do we update the record let's say there is already one record we have it right how do we update that particular record again the url should remain the same right it is going to remain the same let's update the same record the raj record what we have right and let's update this record since when we are updating record now means we're going to send some uh, you know data so uh, let's make it like maybe we miss comma here i guess yeah so application type is json again we have our authorization token but the request will be now patch and not the get request so we are updating something so patch request this is the url this is the headers same thing but now we want to pass a payload because we want to update something and the payload is here what exactly we want to update for this particular record so let's say we want to update the subscription field but which was already premium so maybe we can make it as a standard rather than premium right because we know that uh, it is already a premium let's make it uh, you know standard let's refresh here to see whether you know it gets updated or not so we can see the raj has a premium subscription and now we want to run these things to make it a standard let's run this thing now we got the updated recorded return with the standard as subscription got changed so let's see whether here also it is reflected you can see it got reflected right so this is how uh, you know uh, you can update so let's make it again a premium run this again and we should uh, make it premium and let's go and check now it got premium it got updated right now what next we should be uh, now we are able to update the record how do we create the record right that is the next thing because when i say you know i'm using it for uh, let's say you know updating the machine learning predictions or the whatever let's say i have a streamlit application i am going to integrate streamlit application with this particular airtable api so that i can you know store everything what uh, you know input user putting inside the model and what model is prediction and all so i will be having all this detail here the input user put the model prediction and then i will ask my client to give a feedback and so that we can reuse that data again to return the model so that is what my typical you know uh, workflow okay now let's see how we can create again i missed the comma here let me put it here you have url right same thing customers url because we have customers table we have headers because now we want to send some data content time with json now the payload become the list of records that we want to create right it is the same syntax so if you see so when we get record when we list record we also get this you know key which was you know uh, records right so we also want to make sure we send in the same format so here we are creating our payload which is nothing but a dictionary which has one key called records which is nothing but the list so here we have to specify the list of record that we want to create so you can see we have currently two records this one the first second one and the each record we have to specify what fields we want to create so we know that we have a name we have an age and we have subscription so the first record we call it as a rahul we want to make it as a standard the second one is a rabina with the premium and this is particular age they have pretty simple now let's pass this dictionary as a payload to the data so when you use request library if you want to make a post request you give the url you give the header and then you can pass our payload here Let's hit this thing and we will see whether we get those two records created or not. You see in the response, response gives you the 
both the records you know created how do you know whether they are created because now you got some id associated with them so that you can use this id and maybe retrieve uh, you know one of them or uh, whatever thing so let's see whether we got these two records created if i go here and you could see now we got the rahul and ravina both the records got created so very pretty simple i like uh, actually the uh, the plain api the rest api part of it so that i have full flexibility you know what to do with and how to uh, use this particular thing now the last thing we want to do is you know how do we delete the records right so let's delete one of the record maybe we will delete this uh, okay let's delete one of the recently created record maybe we can delete the rahul's record okay let's see what is the id associated with rahul i think this the first one let's take this one and you know uh, let's add this here and we want to now send a delete request i hope you are observing here request.delete there was the request.post right then we had a request.patch and then earlier we were a get request right so let's make a delete request same thing you have a url some headers that you want to pass and then eventually we are not sending any data or we are not request right so we just have a token in the header and this is the id that we want to delete right make sure we have a rahul and now we want to delete it so let me run this particular sale and it should delete ideally so we got the delete is equal to true which record got deleted this is the record got deleted now let's go and check and we see it is gone so this is a pretty easy i you know you can i actually use it for uh, let's say as i told you the machine learning thing and i get many requests nowadays to actually integrate Airtable into their uh, different different applications or even integrate machine learning inside the Airtable. So if you are interested, you can watch the other two videos also. And uh, I hope you found this video useful. I will be sharing, you know, code of this video so that you can try yourself. And yeah, that's that's all. Let me know in the comment if you want me to, you know, make some any other video that you are interested with respect to mostly rate say related to the natural language processing. Thank you.